Hello, my name is Gideon Ferber and in this clip I'm going to demonstrate several new options in the Maestro 6. The first is uh, transition logic without scripting or what we call signals. The second is how to create and add conditions to the playout. And the last option uh, that we are going to cover is macros. So, let's begin. Uh, what we are watching right now is the default interface of the Maestro and for this clip I'm going to use a local render engine to simulate the out signal that in real life condition would come from the DVG. Alright, let's start. So the first thing I'm going to cover is the signals and the idea here is to allow us to create a transition logic between pages without the need of scripting. So let's start creating a small rundown and through that I will explain how it works. So the first thing I want to add is the background just for us to have something to look a little bit better. Let's create a new rundown and add the background page. The second element that I want to add is the frame signal and the last element that I want to add is the table signal. Let's start from playing those three pages and see how they behave and then we'll go a little bit more in depth and see how the logic is, um, is built in the page itself. However, before we actually play it, I would like to change the layer of the table to a different one and we are ready to play. So just connect, load and it's loaded we can actually play. So let's start from the background so we have something and now I want to play the frame signal. So again just Q and play and we have the, f the frame. Um, and the next is the table and for the table again just Q and play and you can see that it triggered the out event of the frame. Once we play the, the table the frame played the out event. How does it work? So let's go back to the frame and if we'll take a look on the timeline of the frame you can see that we have here a lightning icon which indicates a signal. Now what it means is whenever we click the play button or, the or whenever we trigger the play event the first take of this specific page it will trigger the signal and it will create virtual parameter called frame in and it will give it a value of 1. If we go to the table page you can see that we have the same lightning icon on the take however we have another event which is the signal event. So whenever we receive the signal which is called frame in we trigger the out animation and in this way we actually created the connection between the pages so whenever we play the frame we send the signal saying frame in equals one whenever we the table page receive the signal it triggers the out animation and it works of course the vice versa so the frame signal has the signal event of chart in so whenever the chart is in it will trigger the out animation of the frame. So in this way you can create a connection between different pages, between different rundowns, you can send signals back and forth to trigger all sorts of events. Now the beauty of it, as you saw, no scripting whatsoever, only a matter of defining the name of the signal and giving it the value and then actually deciding what happens in this specific event. Let's take a look how again how it behaves so clean the output and then again trigger the background so whenever we trigger the frame we have the frame in once we trigger the table it triggers first the out animation of the frame and then does the in animation of the table okay the next thing I would like to demonstrate is the conditions or how to add conditions to a page and as before let's 
first see how it behaves and then go deep more in depth and see how it was done. So first let's clear the output and I want to work with the lower third in. Now if we add a lower third and with one set of information and now I want to use again another lower third however with a different set of information so instead of Van Rompuy I want to use President Obama now again as before I would like to first of all load the information then I want to actually play the background and then go to the lower third so the first one is and actually before that I would like to change also the layer once again. So the first is Van Rompuy, cue it, play it, and we have it inside. Now the second lower third is with a different set of information, however the first lower third is already in, so I don't need the full animation of the lower third, I just need the change animation. And if we'll, take, if we'll play it, you can see that it didn't take everything out and then back in, it just triggered the change and now how it is built so if we we'll take a look on again on the timeline of the lower third we can see several things and the first one is that we have the script icon in here and if we we'll take a look at the script we are using now parameters so the first one we have here a parameter called lower third and I'm now ignoring the item take count it's not relevant for this specific example. So we are using a lower third in parameter and by default on the on the queue uh, phase the value is zero. However when we play the scene or whenever we play the first take you can see that we have an if condition on top of that specific take. So now it actually checks the number of the take and the value of the lower third in parameter that we defined previously. And if the condition is true, then it triggers the lower third in event. And then after we triggered it once, it changes the value of the parameter we defined to one. And then the next take, again, we have the condition on top, checking the number of the take, and again the value of the lower third in parameter. So if the value is 1, don't play the in all over again, just play the lower third change animation. And in this way we can actually create a more sophisticated graphics. So we don't have to play always the in and the out and then in again in order to trigger the change. We can just check specific parameter and according to that parameter trigger the correct animation. So the first time we played it, it played the first set of data with the in animation, second time we played it, second set of data with the change animation. So that's for uh, conditions. Of course there are many many options and if you will take a look for a second uh, you can see that we can actually use also the built-in help mechanism. So for example if we will type up and then dot and you can see that we actually see the list of available commands and you can select out of them or type and double click add and then you have again the next set of commands available and so even if you are not very familiar with, with scripts and typing scripts it's not that complicated. Alright so let's get rid of that and that covered the conditions and how to add conditions to a page. The last element I would like to cover are actually macros and macros can give you more flexibility in the in the entire production or you can actually create more complicated actions available or accessible in a very short way. So let's add the macros bar in here and I have prepared already two sample macros. The first one is to change the skin of the entire rundown. So I want to change everything to orange and then everything back to blue. So I created two macros and for that, well right now you can see the blue color. So let's add also another page just to make sure that 
everything here is blue and you can see that all color theme of the entire pro pro uh, project everything is blue. So now I take it off air unload the information and trigger the macro and what you can actually see now is that the project that the maestro is taking the information from is maestronew.warm now if we load it if we queue and play you can see that it's orange and if we'll trigger for instance the lower third you can see that the lower third is orange as well so we what we did we actually changed the entire color theme of the pro of the rundown by one click of a macro how it's actually been done if we'll take a look inside the macro you can see that this is already well let's say a free javascript um, commands that you can use again we have the same help mechanism so the same example as before if i type the application and then we have all the commands available and so what we did actually we took the playlist and we actually checked what's the current project it's taking the information from and then changed it instead of the current one to the maestro warm project and actually what we did we've created the same project twice once in blue color theme called maestro new and then another one with the same production same pages same exports with the name of maestro new dot warm which is the orange color theme that's it so it's it, it is checking the project the information is taken from and then changing it to the Maestro New Warm. In exactly the same way I can now of course unload the pages, trigger the blue macro and you can see again that the project now is set back to Maestro New and if we load everything that's it, it will change the color theme back to blue. So that's the concept and create your own macro buttons, macro actions using JavaScript and you can actually add more uh, buttons, create more actions to have uh, a greater amount of control over the production and the rundown. That's it. So we covered uh, transition logic using signals, we covered uh, conditions using if scripting, and we've covered using macros with JavaScript. Just to make sure that indeed the rundown is now blue, you can see that we have everything in blue. That's it. Thank you very much for your time.